Hi, and welcome. My name is Claudia Wilmes, and I'm a scientific editor at CELL. Today, uh, we are here at the 87th Cold Spring Harbor Symposium on Stem Cells. With me today is Guo Li. Welcome. And um, I'm looking forward to discussing science with you. Um, you work on um, molecular mechanisms of neurodevelopment, and you also look at a range of neurological disorders. So, and in your work, you use models that are based on stem cells. So, um, to get us started with this conversation, maybe you can tell me a bit more about the broad range of topics you look at and what kind of stem cells you use. So. Most of our work started with the human-induced pluripotent stem cells. So this is a special cell type that is reprogrammed from normal cells that you can get from individuals and in patient and in normal people. And you can do a molecular trick to reprogram this back to like pluripotency, very much behaving the cells like embryonic stem cells, meaning that they can be differentiated into any single cell type in a human body. Mm. And so you use those as a model to study human relevant disease. Yes, so our focus is the nervous system. So our, our, what, we, what we are doing is trying to differentiate this iPSCs or induced pluripotent stem cells into the cells in our brain namely the neurons, the glial cell types, astrocytes, oligodendrocytes. And we try to use this human-based uh, cell systems to study uh, how our brain is formed. We can do this in different ways. We can do them in, with like uh, mono-layer uh, cultures, traditionally call them 2D cultures, or we can differentiate now into a more 3D-like structures. Uh, these are called brain organoids. Mm -hmm. And you do this with patient-derived induced pluripotent stem cells? Yes, as I mentioned, you can essentially generate this type of iPSCs from anybody, meaning that even from normal individuals or with individuals with different type of neurological diseases. Mm -hmm. And we, if for the past 20 years or so, we have been focusing on psychiatric disorders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe maybe you can go a bit deeper there. Um, so I remember very um, much uh, reading papers from you on, on Zika virus. I mean, obviously, this was a very concerning situation, and people did not know what was going on, and you were studying this. Um, since, fortunately, there is not much talk about Zika, anymore. So are you still working on Zika or what diseases are you most excited about to study these days? So yeah, so actually, you know, science is all about accident. So we started to work on Zika virus is kind of accidental. Uh, as I mentioned, when we started working on uh, using starting from induced pluripotent stem cells or iPS cells to generate brain organoids, one of the questions is, what kind of uh, disease we can apply our uh, organoids to study. And at that time, there's, of course, the news all over about the Zika virus and its potential link to microcephaly. However, there's no real model systems allowing us to study microcephaly, uh, which is the babies, are, when they are born, they have a smaller head, meaning mm. that they're, during development, the brain is not fully formed. And we thought our brain organoid model, which is mimicking the development of the brain development, um, maybe this is, could be a perfect system uh, to study whether Zika can cause microcephaly. And yeah, uh, it, so we are the first to apply organoid system, brain organoid systems to study the Zika virus. Mm -hmm. And we show that first, actually for the first time that indeed, when you infect the brain organoids with Zika virus, they actually are smaller, uh, very similar uh, to what happened to microcephaly. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so 
it's great that Zika virus is no longer a threat. We also applied, recently we also applied our uh, brain organoid system to study how SARS-CoV-2 mm -hmm. impacted the brain systems. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so what do you see? So that's a, actually another uh, finding that we're really kind of excited is that when we apply brain organoids, we found actually the infection is very limited. That is puzzling. However, there's something happened very, um, let's say, uh, there's certain organoids that are not really patterned well uh, so that they contain other brain region tissues. And in this case, what we have is that a organoids that are containing choriplexis tissues. And whenever there's an organoid that is not fully patterned and con contains this choriplexis, mm -hmm. then the infection seems to be higher. That led us to hypothesize maybe the choriplexis it could be the target for uh, uh, SARS-CoV-2 uh, infection uh -huh. in the brain. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yeah, we uh, then we generate an organoid specific for choriplexis and show that indeed they are uh, they can be readily infected. Uh, by the virus and that lead caused the death and a loss of function of those cells. Mm. So these are actually a special type of cells in the brain that generate cerebral spinal fluid. So it's the liquid in, in, in the brain. Mm -hmm. So we've, we've been <coughs> talking about um, neurodevelopment and when we talk about development we often think about embryonal or postnatal growing, but actually there's also neurodevelopment supposed to be happening in adults. So, and, and you are studying that as well. Yes, so uh, we know that uh, major developmental uh, processes, the gen gen generation of majority of the neurons and glial cells are, hap are happening during very early development, most embryonic uh, uh, time, and maybe some during early postnatal. But we do find there's a special, actually there's early findings, of course, we are all sitting on the, giant, the shoulder of the giants. There's a lot of early studies to suggest that there are special forms of neurodevelopment in the adult brain as well, that's called adult neurogenesis. And there are two regions that has been identified and specifically in humans as in the hippocampus. In, but in the last, decade or so, there's always the debate whether we do have adult neurogenesis in the human beings, in, that means in our brain, in our hippocampus. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, some people say, yes, we do, and some people say, no, we don't. Mm -hmm. uh, and so how so do you study that? Do you also use um, IPS models for that, or probably some yeah, other models? Yeah, as you know, IPS model usually it can model development really yeah. well, but it does not really a model the adult uh, mm -hmm. situation uh, under most conditions. For this, we actually utilized uh, human tissues, mm -hmm. uh, postmortem tissues, and uh, performed uh, single cell RNA sequencing and s try to identify the special uh, newly born, newly generated cells in the adult hippocampus. Mm. And we, uh, we actually can identify this uh, immature neurons uh, in the adult hippocampus actually through up to the age of 90 years old. Mm -hmm. And you do that in mice? Or? We also, uh, we have also done that actually for, the, uh, for a lot of our work, we have done that in, in, the, in the mice system. And then in the mouse, it's very robust and there's no debate on that. Mm, yeah, yeah. The, I think the main uh, question is whether in humans, uh, in, and in our brain, whether there's this uh, type of plasticity mm. in the brain. Yeah, yeah. so it's, it's really a broad range of topics that you're using and a broad range of, of methods. It's really fascinating. So maybe, um, how did you come into the field of, of, of studying stem cells? What's your, what drives you? That's a great question. So, um, I was trained uh, 
as a graduate student, uh, mainly uh, focusing on uh, neurodevelopment. So it's always a fa fascinating field for me. And um, um, we started actually using stem cells uh, as a model system when it was uh, first discovered that there, uh, the development of this induced pluripotent stem cells, of course, by Shinya Yamanaka. Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, actually paradigm shifting, uh, I think, uh, work, uh, allowing us to finally working on human-based cell systems. As, you, as I mentioned, that we mainly use the mouse uh, model system, and before that, I used the Xenopus, which is a frog system, to study the neurodevelopment. Mm. So uh, with this, the, the new development, the technology of iPSCs, we started to uh, think maybe this is, would be a great system to study human biology uh, uh, and uh, human brain development. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm, I'm looking forward to following on with your science and it sounds like there is, like the doors are open for exciting new discoveries. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you.